But welcome back, y'all. Welcome back to another episode. And <laughs> I don't even, bro, I, don't, I honestly don't even know what to kick it off with because there's so many things y'all want me to continue from the last episode. But there's a lot of other things, a lot of requests I've been getting and a lot of things I've just been seeing on social media. But one thing in particular that's been standing out to me is not even really the theoretical because we've been we've been seeing it happen a lot lately and I feel like that should be our opening topic of today. Um, and also before I even continue, for all the new people that's up in here, hit that uh, that follow button, hit that like button, and it's so even though I'm a holistic trainer, a holistic coach, and we ask health questions, holistic questions, and theories and all that type of stuff, I talk about everything. So if you feel like asking a mental question that I can answer, like or like something that you feel as though we could converse about, do so. I'm I'm not gonna brush it off just on my phone's over there, so I can't really scroll like I want to. But just if I don't get to your comment, comment it again, put a little something by so I can notice it and we'll get to it. But the thing I want to talk, I want to start breaking the ice with today is the man versus woman war we have going on right now. And it took me a long time to like really even try to compartmentalize that and kind of accept the reality of it. But I will say this, a lot of the podcasts that's been popping up, thanks for the share, I see the share coming, thank you for the love. Um, a lot of the the podcasts I've been seeing, a lot of the stuff on Instagram, like everybody's podcast nowadays is talking about the correlation or the relationship romantically uh, uh, between men and women. And it's like, it's always what somebody can get out of something. Thank y'all for, I see the hearts coming. Thank y'all so much for the love. It's always what somebody can get out of somebody else and not, and I, and, and I, one of the biggest prime example, I don't like the, what you bring to the table conversation. I don't like it. And not because I'm somebody that's avoiding that conversation or avoiding those actions, but I feel as though what what needs to be brought to said table for those two people or five people of you in a polyamorous relationship, it don't matter. Whatever said, what it means, whatever needs to be brought to that table is whatever needs to be brought to that table, regardless of how much or how little you bring into the table. But it's it's what's gonna work. It's what's gonna happen. Prime example, like a lot of people these days are putting very unrealistic. Uh, not even really characteristics, but expectations on people. Oh, he got to have this. She got to have this. He got to look like this. She got to look like this. And I don't feel like it's fair. It's like, don't get me wrong. You're going to get typically what you want if you keep aspiring for it. And if you keep shooting for that type of person, place, or things, you're probably going to get it. But a lot of people have been reporting that they're not even happy when they actually get that because they listen to such and such. Or they listen to the uh, the the standard core, or the status quo of social media is that in the third. So they finally get into these... Um, they finally get into these, these what's the word, these relationships, and they're just like, oh, it's not what I thought it was. It's not what I actually wanted. Somebody said, don't get distracted, Kings. Trade stock options and get your bread. That part, too. We can, we can dive into that later if y'all want to. Um, But essentially what I'm saying is like, a lot of these people are just not happy. And it is like, well, I got the, I got the prime example. I got the guy that's six four. He makes six figures. And, you know, we go on trips and blah, 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 and this, that, and the third. You know, but like, he cheats on me. Or like he does, I don't feel appreciated or blah, 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 blah. And some people be like, well, I mean, you know, you you live in this type of life and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's it's good. It's monetary. But it's like, that's not what I wanted. You know, it's, it's not what I thought I wanted. You know, I'm going to hold on, Let me get to your question. People have to share the same vision and be equally yoked. Definitely agree to that. We're going we're gonna to dive into that in a few seconds. Did I top you before you look familiar? I highly doubt it. Uh, I'm a virgin. Um, people have to share the same vision and the uh and be equally yoked. Now, here's why. Here's why I agree with that. I agree with that because I, I'll I'll say this: a lot of people don't really understand what that even honestly means. You know, it, it's like whenever somebody says, "Oh, we're equally yoked," or we, you know, like we're we have the same vision and we're trying to aspire for the same things in a relationship. That doesn't mean that one person's higher or lower than the other. Like, I hate that people view relationships in hierarchy. It's like, oh, well, the alpha male or the alpha woman and blah, 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 blah. When in all actuality, you need a partner that's going to stick beside you through it all. You know, the things that you like, that person should be great at. The things that they like, you should be great at and vice versa. Are we building each other up? So to me, my definition of being equally yoked is that, okay, we, we have the same vision and we have the same, or we're, we're going to, flow according to the same purpose and mandate that we've placed and accepted on our relationship. So it takes X amount of work from both parties to make it, to make it function and to make it work holistically, you know? And I, and I feel as though a lot of people, as much as they like to bash certain ideologies of, and I mean, and then granted, a lot of people are moving away from the monogamous mindset, but like when they do come for certain ideologies and they start to bash it, I don't agree. And this blah, 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 blah. And I don't want to be that person at home cooking and cleaning, blah, 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 blah. I oftentimes rebuttal or I tell them this. Me personally, I don't feel as though you have to 
aspire or live up to a said, quote unquote, you know, I'd like to say gender roles and stuff like that. I feel as though you need to step up to the plate in the relationship in the places that needed to be um, dealt with. Because prime example, somebody like me, I don't need nobody cleaning and cooking. And I mean, it's a, don't get me wrong, it's appreciated. But I don't need nobody cooking and cleaning up after me and stuff like that because in my to in in my in my opinion, you should have been this type of way before said person. If they do that for you or for y'all, like it's a benefit, it's a plus. But if I've already been living a said type of life, and the whole point of us bringing our lives together is to bring together the pieces that work and work on the things that need to be worked on. So if I require you to cook and clean and blah, 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 blah. Well, how was I, at least to me, from my perspective, I could be wrong, but how was I functioning before you even got here? You know what I'm saying? And that, and that's just how I think about it. It's like, I should have, my my domain should have been sterilized, clean. I should have been satiated every day on my own. And I get it. And I'm a firm believer that, I mean, I've been with my beautiful lady for going on four years. I'm a firm believer that, a woman could make, and, and I'm a, I'm just, and I don't want to offend nobody. I'm just talking from a straight man standpoint. I don't, you know, I'm, I like women, but I believe that once again, I'm not trying to offend nobody. But one, but I believe that you know, a good woman, or if you if you have the right partner and y'all equally yoked and aspiring for the same things, she can make your house a home. She can make it better. She can she can uh help you aspire to things. But at the same time, you got to be giving that back. I'm a firm believer. In, I, I see y'all comments. I'm about to get to it. I'm a, uh, and if I don't, if I miss it, please comment again because it looked like some really good stuff. Um, but I'm a, I'm a firm believer of like, of like, how can I put it? Of just reciprocity. You know, it's like, and that comes back in so many different ways. It doesn't have to be, well, I do this, so you have to do this for me, or blah blah blah. It's like, no, it's like, okay, this isn't, this isn't. I have prime example on this how we function in my relationship. So I, I am the busier person. I have. Well, I ain't gonna say I'm, I'm the busier person, but like I'm the provider of this household, right? So certain things, my schedule goes a certain type of way each type of day, right? So there's things I can't get to, or if I do get to, I'm probably gonna be exhausted. Is that in the third? I don't tell her, hey, make sure it's cooked, make sure it's blah 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 blah. If she hasn't cooked by say when I officially clock off, because typically after these these lives that I do, I go edit. If I have a rehearsal, I go to rehearsal, or I have a rehearsal at my house with the band, and then um you know we'll we'll go either get something to eat or whatever. And also I don't mind cooking. You know, but you got some people that's like, well, if I'm doing this, you got to cook and you got blah, blah, No, because I understand while I'm also doing this. And if y'all don't follow, y'all can go follow at Amber.Daze, D-A-Z-E. She, I know she's also working on her craft and her brand as well. I understand that the foal of my relationship is two creative entrepreneurs coming together to not only build something better for the society, but for our relationship and our families. You know, so y'all please put them uh, questions back. I only see one. Y'all, please, because uh, I, I was about to wrap this up and get to those questions. I see them already uh, going away because somebody else coming. But I'm a, I really want to answer the other one up there. It looked interesting. But that's just the cycle of our relationship. And then there's days while I'm not as busy. And it's like, okay, either we go get something neat. I could cook something. You could cook something. Like, you know, you do what works for your relationship. I feel like the hustle and the bustle and the the, the aggravation and the friction comes from whenever y'all just not vibing on the same thing. And, like, you shouldn't want a slave or you shouldn't want, like, a, a maid for your, your partner. At least to me. I don't want that. Like, I just, and no offense when I say this, but I just don't like a weak person as a partner. Like, I like to be challenged. I like I like obstacles. I like the fact that we get to criticize and critique each other. I like the fact that we're growing together. I shouldn't have to live my life and then show you or tell you how to live your life. You know what I'm saying? Like like they just said, balance is the key. But if when you go around saying that, but you or if you can't express it properly, all of a sudden you're against this person and you're against that and blah blah blah. I'm like, no. People do what works for their relationship. I personally love taking care of my beautiful woman. Like that is literally. Like one of the things I wake up thinking about, how can I make our lives better together? How can I give her as much ease as possible? Because y'all don't know, I've been knowing her since like fourth, third, fourth grade. I've been after her since that. We've been dating for four, for going on four years, but I've been after her since we were children. You know, and when the destiny and the time finally lined up for us to be together, it's like I finally got what I always wanted and it's better than what I thought it was. We're not perfect. Every relationship got its ups and downs and stuff like that. But I wake up every morning. Kids, y'all not like clockwork. I wake up. God, thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for the food I eat, clothes I wear, bed I sleep in, house I stand, mama, daddy, sister, brother, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, and whatever else I got to pray for and meditate on in the morning. And I go by my business. 
But I wake up with that battery, with that appreciation, with that drive. Like, there's a reason why there's pictures of her and I all over my studio. It's like, I'm appreciative of that. You know, and I, and I work and I do what I have to do no matter what it is. Like, if all this stuff go away, my holistic practice goes away and TikTok goes away, blah, blah, blah. I don't care if I got to flip some doggone burgers to make ends meet for this woman. Like, that's that's just my drive, you know, but that doesn't fit for everybody else. That doesn't fit for somebody else who requires X, Y, and Z. So I guess my point is, is that, like, this whole man versus woman or partner versus sp- whatever what we got going on needs to stop because... What works for me, what works for you, what works for everybody else up in here does not work for it. Because, like, we're losing individual. Let me hold. I'm going to get to it. Let me answer these questions. Amazing that you find your beautiful soulmate. I, I know. I agree. That's my that's my baby. Um, Y'all, if y'all, well, y'all, if y'all didn't put the, the questions, it must not be that important to y'all. I'm, I'm going to say this. Uh, What was I about to say? <laughs> you say you say 100. Thank you so much. When it, com- when it comes down to all of this, everything that I'm, that I'm pretty much saying. We're, I feel as though as a hive mind society, because that's, that's what it is at this point, we are losing individual individuality. It's, it's all about trends. It's all about doing what's popular. It's all about the status quo and pop culture and stuff like that. And people are forgetting, are they're losing appreciation and respect for the simple practice of being yourself or being yourself with somebody else or just living your own life. If you don't want to be an entrepreneur, don't sit there and let social media make you think you got to wake up and make three, four, five hundred dollars a day. If that ain't you and that ain't your battery and you want to go to school, get your little job or a little practice or a little trade or whatever and live your life for that with your little dog or whatever, do that. Don't let nobody force you into something you're not trying to do. She said, I will state that it is not easy to find a partnership these days. No, I agree because I'm... I, I, when I tell you I'm so I'm so grateful. One thing one thing about me, I acknowledge my blessings, and I am grateful for. I don't wake up and just be grateful because oh well I gotta be grateful or it's gonna leave me. It's like no, I'm appreciative because I know what I have. You know I've been bro. If y'all quick quick insight to my life from from my sophomore year of college because I got into college at twenty third in twenty I'm twenty seven so I got into college at uh in twenty thirteen from my sophomore year of college. Up until right before I started dating her, we uh well not we I, I was and I've I've never cheated on nobody a day in my life. I've never stepped out of no relationship. I never smashed on nobody else. I never disrespected nobody. Like I always honor my relationships because I've, I've I get that from my my parents. Like I like I honor my parents have been together since sophomore year of high school. You know, and they're still together through the ups and, and they're very transparent with me. They, the ups and downs, the almost this, that, and the thirds, like my people keep it real with me. And my th- and, and I always talk to my parents about relationships and they'd be like, well, what makes it work? It, the relationship stops working when you stop working. One of the biggest things that my dad told me was like, he was like through the ups and the downs that me and your mom had been through, like my, my people are about to be 50. Like the, the ups and downs that they've been through, he was like, I woke up and chose your mother every day. Even when I was mad at her, even when we was going through this, that, and the third. And I ain't going to put, I'm going to let, because eventually they're coming on the podcast. I want to get them either next week or week after, especially my mom. Yo, my mom is, my mom the goat. But one of the biggest things he said was, even whenever we weren't in synchronicity or we weren't in harmony in the house, even whenever y'all was still living with us, he was like, I woke up and chose your mother every day throughout all of the BS. You know, he's saying it's not the easiest thing to do. You're not going to, some days you're just not going to wake up. You got to think about it. You're living life with the same, are you choosing to live life with the same person to the end of your life? My parents have been married for, ooh, 20, 25 years, I want to say. They've been married for 25. They've been together for almost 30 years, I want to say. I'm, and the numbers might be wrong, but I know it's like 20 plus years they've been together slash married. And, um, and, and he was like, you're living your life. And even my mom said this too. Uh, y'all living your life with each other and y'all choosing each other, right? But through it all, through through it all, it's like you're gonna have days of, and just scientifically speaking, five to seven, um, five to seven, every five to seven years, the mind changes, the people change, people grow and evolve. So you're gonna watch that person evolve. You're not even dating the same or married to the same person you've been with years ago. So you have to wake up and choose to love that person through their change through their, their good health conditions and their bad health con, uh, conditions, through their good uh, positive mindsets and their negative mindsets, through their ups and through their downs. You know, and like, I feel like as a generation, and not even just as a society, we're losing that. It's always about who's 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 higher or who has this and accolades and blah, 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 blah. It's like, for me, 
Oh, thank you. Uh, you said congrats to the book. So the thank if y'all know what they're talking about, I dropped my book like a month ago. It's called Coach's Quick Fix. Go to coachbrian.com. I'll hit the link in my bio. Shout out to everybody that's been supporting my book and my products. But we'll, we'll dive into that later. I, we talk about relationship, but but much love. Thank you so much. Um, but what essentially what I'm saying is like we're living in a in the day and age to where it's like we are at odds with each other for no reason. You don't like that person, or that person isn't compatible with you, go about your life. That person did you wrong, this, that, and the third. You hash that out. If y'all, if y'all not even in a condition or a place to where you can hash that out, you deal with that internally. Because I oftentimes tell, tell people, you talking about you need closure and you can't get over blah, 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 blah. But what if that person was to pass today? You can't have no more conversations with that person, but you needed closure from that person to heal from blah, 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 blah. That's You got to realize that in order to heal, oftentimes in order to heal, you have, you have to go within. There's been, y'all, I didn't been as, as, as faithful and loyal as I am of a person in a relationship and as, as hard as I try to be a great person, I've been cheated on before. And I, and I talked about this in the other episode yesterday. I was like, it's, it took me a while to realize that it's not me because you can have somebody doing literally everything right in a relationship, everything that person ever wanted in a relationship. But if they're not right within, or if they're struggling with certain things within that, that's a, that's more, just reasoning for some people is a lot less than what you think it may be. And then they doing what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Or some people just, and you got some people that's just greedy. I got me a good one. He do this, who do that. He got bombed, this, that, and blah, 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 blah. And I want my kick and I'm eating too. And I'm still messing around with such and such. I have family members that, that's like that. I have, I have, and it's sad to say, but I got people that's like that around me. And like, I'm glad that doesn't, that doesn't affect me or like I don't chew on that or, or, or digest that, but it just goes to show you can do everything right, but just end up. But that's what we talked about yesterday, trying to trying to establish your um trying to establish your discernment, trying to establish your intuition, and really practice those things to where you can be in a place of oh well, even though this happened to me, even though blah 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 this that and that, or even though I'm dealing with this person, I got a good feeling. So if you got a gut feeling or a spiritual feeling or whatever it may be, you know what I'm saying? It's like. Sometimes you got to heed to that. Even if it's been two, three years in a relationship, something, something off, something not right. It's, I don't know. It's, it's just something weird. Like a lot of people brush that off. No, dive into that. And I'm not saying let it play with your mind, but what I'm saying is be holistic about it. Really meditate, pray and chewing. Okay, okay, like I really need discernment. I need confirmation about it, blah, 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 blah. I need to sign you, blah, 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 blah. And when you get those answers, don't deny those answers. And that's another thing, too. We oftentimes want and desire and try to manifest these things. And when it comes to us, we reject it. Oh, man, if only I could, if only I knew what's going on behind closed doors. Is such and such really playing on my top and this, that, and the third? What's really going on? And then you get a hint or you get a whiff or you get the truth about what's going on. Oh, no, not mine. That ain't me. Blah, blah, this, that, and the third. And then now you just you bottle it up. It's like, no, like when you when that truth comes, because here's another thing, too. Whenever, whenever you listen to that discernment, and that intuition, and then it proves itself to be right, and you act on it no matter how much. Because y'all didn't been there. I'm telling y'all, I didn't been there. I had, to, I got to go through hell before I got this girl. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. Like, if y'all was to only know half the stuff I've been through in relationships, and no, I'm not. Thank you for the rose, my love. And I'm not perfect. I'm not. Granted, I, I don't cheat. I don't do all the other type of stuff. But I'm not gonna sit here and talk like I'm, I'm Mr. Holier than thou, and I'm perfect. This, that, and the third. No, I try my best to be a better man every single day. And no, I'm not abused. I don't put my hands on people. I don't, I don't do none of that either. But I'm pretty sure the people. That I have broken up with and have broken up with me, with me outside of like, you know, the people that obviously didn't cheat on me. I'm not talking about the people that did cheat on me. I'm talking about the people that I was in like constructive relationships with. I'm pretty sure they had their reasons to leave me. Whether it be compatibility or lack of constructive progression and this, that, and the third, it is what it is. But what I'm saying is every single day when you ask for truth and you ask for discernment and you ask for these things, thank you so much for the crown. Man, this live is lit today. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. And, and y'all, once again, I'm getting to y'all questions. Some of them flying up a little too fast, but like if I didn't get to it yet, just comment it again. Like just give me another one. I'm going to get to it when I'm in between topics. It's just, you know, I'm just in that zone right now. But um, but yeah, it, it's like you got you to gotta choose yourself and accept the truth when it comes to you. Because a lot of us aren't really operating and our, our, our gifts are trying to operate through us, but we deny them or we don't use them and we don't accept them. So whenever the things start happening and you're in these cycles and you're in these patterns and you're going from crappy relationships to even crappy, that was my thing. I'm going to sit here and be, because look, like I said, I'm not perfect. I'm going to sit here and be real with y'all. There was a point when I was in college, I was just chasing booty. And it turned from me chasing booty to trying to get relationships from that. You know, like trying to 
base my relationships off of the dumbest stuff. You know, not just being naive. But then as I got older and then I learned to like respect myself on top. You see, and it's a thing like you have to respect yourself. Like the moment I started respecting myself and putting a higher value on myself and like walking in who I really am. That's when the women I was. Uh, chasing booty. <laughs> that's when <laughs> y'all silly, bro. That's when um, that's when the, the quality, or should, or should I say, the women that I that I deem of high quality to me, because that's also interchangeable. But like, that's whenever the um, that's whenever those type of things started start. Well, those type of women started coming to me. But also, that's when the test really started too, because that's one thing about you being on the right path in life and you getting closer and closer to your dreams. Life doesn't go like this. You don't just be born and then like you come into this world and life is just oh easy. No, life gonna look sometimes like this. You gotta go back and then sometimes you got you know like we mess up. We're not perfect. We're not. We don't know how to sit here and create stuff like like a god. We don't. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta get through it. And once you start getting through that stuff, that's a whole bro. That's a whole nother life. Like I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even gonna cap. I knew when I was gonna get her that things were gonna get better or like I was gonna be experiencing another type of like love relationship level and stuff like that. But it's like, I didn't think it was going to be... I'm going to just be honest with y'all. I didn't think it was going to be this good. Like, there's very little. There is very little that I dislike about her or that what she does. Like, because, you know, I, and, I, and that's another thing, too. Well, hold up. At least you grew up to realize that because there are some old men out here that still... Sh exactly. And I'm about to go into that, too. But oh, what I'm about to say is about to tie into that. But what I'm saying is, like, because no, cause nobody's perfect, right? You know, it's like even the people that we we've grown to love the most in relationships they, they do some stuff that piss you off they do some stuff that just don't tie together with everything that's going on in your life sometimes and that's fine that's okay but at the same time it's, it's like i didn't think it was gonna be this good you know what i'm saying and vice versa it's like and one of the things it, like i said before i don't like weak partners i never did you know so it's like one thing that i really like about her and even and all y'all zodiac people gonna be like oh well it don't make sense because she's a pisces but anyways and i'm an aries but anyways like I love the fact that that girl challenged me almost every single day. Like, from the moment we dated up until now, the problems that we had, and it was, un and honestly, and, and I'm going to say this, I'm blue in the face. I always, oftentimes tell this to people. It really be the levels of, or the mediums of communication. We had, oh, we had pretty, like, we vibed instantly. Like, I'm talking about we vibed instantly. And when you get, you, I ain't going to even say get out the puppy dog phase. Whenever you, you get to that little point to where, like, you know, it's like it's a it's pretty much like the walls are down, a full transparency. People start really start acting like themselves. Like we kind of clashed a little bit because I was like, okay, that's uh-huh. And then she was like, uh-uh, what you got going on? But then our thing was the reason why we clashed is because we didn't communicate properly sometimes. So we started working on that. We saw, well, I feel this way. Cause I cause we're both here's the downfall. Well, not even a downfall. Here's the here's one of the biggest problems that we still struggle with. It's like we're both hotheads and we're both stubborn. And we both are very competitive. So it's like, we're not, and don't get me wrong, we're not up here cussing each other out and blank you and blank not. We don't do that. I, I, that's one thing my dad taught me. Always respe respect women in general, but respect the person that you're with. I'm not about to sit there and cuss their God like that. And she's not going to do that to me. That just, that's just, you know, as law. But at the same time, we do get into our spats and we do get into our disagreements. And sometimes the ego kicks in. Sometimes the, well, I want to be right kicks in. You know what I'm saying? And she's a great debate. Uh, I almost, I almost said the wrong word. She's a great debater, you know? And like she, and that's what I love about her because like she, even, even when she wrong, bro, it's like she'll, she will, she will say what she has to say to, to have the last point or be right. And it's not all the time though, but it's like, it happens from time to time. So the very thing that we kind of struggle with sometimes actually sometimes bring us uh closer together like i love the fact that she's very competitive like when we're doing couples games when we're on the same team when we're not on the same team it don't matter like we at each other neck you would swear to god we about to fight each other and people are like god damn brian and Amber. every time we play games with them either they team win or this that was like y'all not beating us like we got like a family tradition to like every christmas it's like we go to her people in them house and her uh her, her dad is like a carpenter so he be building like these trophies and stuff like that and she's a, she does carpentry too and like he started doing like the you get to take the trophy home, you put your signature on it, and it has like the little year slots and stuff like that. And I kid you not, she beat me by luck. I wish she was up here so I could I could rub it in her face. She already know what I'm about to say. But um, she beat me that that year. It was last year. She beat me, and I was runner because they have a runner up trophy too. And she and we took both the trophies home. Tell me how we got back to the crib. Not only she was rubbing it in my face, but she hid the trophies. She was like, "You'll see it next year." Like that's I love that spice about that girl. You know what I'm saying? But I digress. Um, 
Pisces gang. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, but like I said, y'all quite please put some more questions if y'all uh if y'all if I didn't get to y'all questions, y'all y'all statements yet. But o- overall, the beauty through the ups and downs, the beauty through actual individuality whenever you're with somebody. That's what we should be chasing. We shouldn't, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying don't get your Birkin bag. I'm not saying don't get your Jeep, don't get flued out. I'm not saying none of that. Go live your best life, but stay true to who you are, what you want, and what you're trying to get out of life. Because the moment you detour from that is the moment calamity starts. Because here's the crazy thing about life. It waits, because everything is a cycle and a pattern. So everything is it's like, did you feel it was right or were you unsure at all about what exactly? Um, life will wait for you to have these moments or these, these off tangent moments to where, okay, here's a new cycle, you know, because you, you stepped out of line of your destiny or you stepped out of line of like what you were supposed to do. So now you have to go through what's called a life lesson to learn something, you know, now whether you pass or fail is on you, but like life has a crazy way of always doing that. So it, it's just like, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's like you get to, you get to that point to where it's like, okay, do I choose to be better and I choose to overcome and actually go through it and learn my lesson, or do I keep deviating? And then I still, I'm still pursuing these things, but I'm not doing it wholeheartedly or how I should be doing it was best for me. And life keeps spiraling down. Like you gotta be real with yourself about it. You said being with being with in a relationship with her. I feel as though for sure we were we are definitely meant to be together. I feel like we like we're gonna get married. We're gonna live our lives definitely like together for us. I feel it. And I would I would be lying if I said that we were both we both had at some point in time whether it be before during or even whenever in a relationship where we were not even unsure but questioning the relationship and I feel like that's human I feel as though even the people that are a hundred percent sure about who they're with and stuff like that and we're gonna get married and blah 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 there's you're gonna you're gonna hit a patch to where it's like okay and are, are you gonna hit consecutive patches rough patches I should say and it's like dang what am I doing. You know, like what's really going on? And that's just the human in us. That doesn't mean, and sometimes that don't even really be your thoughts. Like sometimes you got to remember, we are like subconsciously and consciously programmed. So certain things you're thinking may not even like, like if y'all miss, I think it was episode, um, episode 13 or 14, I want to say on the, uh, I have it on YouTube if y'all, if y'all want to go back and watch it, but it was the, the uh, mental, no, it was the holistic mental therapy episode we had. I had a therapist, her name is Brooke. She came in here and she, uh, she talked about all that type of stuff. And she really opened up my eyes uh, to uh, to about like who's talking to who, like who's really speaking in your head, and like you know, is that your mom's voice? Is that your dad's voice? Is that your ex's voice? Is that your hurt's voice? It's like you got to start to be more one with yourself to figure those things out. And I feel as though as humans, most of us don't even practice that. We don't acknowledge that or try to identify that. So these many different ideologies that we accumulate or like we try to cycle through, you know, is like, are you even going through a mental crisis that's for you? Are you trying? Are you trying to like prime example? Some oh, hold up. My bad, y'all. Somebody was trying to go live with me, and I don't know why that thing popped up like that. But are you? Um, I made me lose my train of thought. Are you? Are you? Are you living the life that's truly meant for you, or, or that's really you? Because I'm one of those people who wholeheartedly believe that, and it's not knocking anybody with a mental disorder or, or mental illness. I'm not because look. I, y'all know me. I'm a nice person. I don't I don't try to bash nobody. Else, Cause y'all not about to cancel me in 2022. Not in this good year. But um, but um, I know that yeah, the connection is glitching. Somebody was trying to um, somebody was trying to what you call it. They was trying to come in with me and I, I declined it. It happens like that from time to time. My bad, y'all. But y'all keep come back and keep sharing to get everybody back up in here. We dropped down to 42. Let's get back to 60. But um, what was I about to say? You have to you have to realize. Well, I I feel as though that certain certain depression, certain anxieties, certain um what X, Y, Z, whatever else that comes upon us, oftentimes our thoughts are mentalities that don't even belong to us. Maybe, maybe thank you for the share. I see the share. Um, maybe it's because we've been watching such and such for so long and we're desiring this reality and this isn't for us. Maybe it's because we listen to such and such demean us and talk down on us or are comparing, because nothing too, people compare too much. It's such a vain way of living these days. And I feel as though what plays into that part of depression, anxiety, social disorder, stuff like that is, like I said before, the lack of individuality. Everything, every single thing that we do these days is is, is trending uh, actions or bandwagoning actions. You know, it's like we had the big boom of like, because I've been doing holistic 
stuff for like seven years. But like my page didn't boom until now. Granted, I didn't start my TikTok until this year. But like, but I was I had an Instagram, Facebook, all this type of stuff for years. And my holistic stuff didn't boom until like January, well, probably like February, March, honestly. But that's because as a whole, as a hive mind, everybody started trying to crave, okay, we need a holistic. And you know what I'm saying? And that granted, it benefits me and it benefits the other people that try to come to me and learn. But it's like that just goes to show that if the mar- if the majority isn't doing it, there's not enough people individually trying to do certain things on their own to have to have its own society be that prominent if that if I'm making sense you know somebody said I have swollen shins so that can be a result I'm gonna adjust the mic a little bit that can be a result of shin splints I used to run track uh I still do my runs and stuff like that but I used to uh prime example so I did cross country and track my mile time was almost four minutes four minutes flat and my three mile time was I forgot but it's like it was really it was I used to run up things sub 18 minutes you know so I used to get shin splits often more so from like running harder and running faster than running long. So I would say you have to start working out your calves a little bit more, working out your shins a little bit more, icing them a little bit more, and also get get a foam roller. I get one of the, um, it's not in here. I wish I had this in the living room. One of the little muscle rollers. And then like start drinking more fruit juice and starting to, and, and remove a lot of that lactic acid or remove a lot of that lymphatic uh, fluid that's probably stuck in there and give yourself a nice flush. I have a seven- and uh, and a ten day detox on my site. You can go to coachbrian.com or you can go to uh, the link in my bio if it's even still working because TikTok been acting weird. But um, you can go to that. I have a PDF protocol. You know, it's the seven to ten day detox, and it'll give you a nice good flush. You know, and it'll dump that. It'll give you a nice little lymphatic reset. So I would say do that uh, and go heavy on the uh, cold pressed fruit juices. Once again, cold pressed fruit juices, and you'll be good. That's to shake you back. And if, and if you if you know you've took like you've taken at least a good fourteen to twenty one days to like flush and really like detoxify your body and stuff like that, or at least to get the process started, and the swelling is still bad and it's sensitive to the touch and stuff like that, you might have a tear. You might have something going on of uh, physic like physical damage going on. So always go get that checked out too as well. People are scared to get in contact with themselves. Oh, for sure, for sure. I, me, me. Before I got to this sense of self, like, cause I was I was oh my god, I didn't. Like me from me in high, let me let me see. Two thousand nine, it was my freshman year of high school. Even before that, it's like to sit down and try to envision myself talking with strangers and like dealing with people on a community level and doing this, that, and the third. I would be petrified. Like I'm just that's just not like, bro. I've always been shy, and then even dealing with my own internal problems, it was like, oh, I'd have like a traumatic memory I had to deal with, or I go through something, or whatever, and I I just refuse to process it. Thank you so much for the love. Lemon, Lemon's in the building. What's happening, Lemon? Lemon, my dog Lemon in the building. Hey, before before I continue, major shout out to Lemon. Major love to Lemon. Lemon is one of the few people on TikTok when I first got on here that really embraced me, that really helped me out, that really showed support, that really showed love. And I thank you. I thank you so much for your time. I thank you so much for like every day she talks to me. Like if I reach out to her, she's going to reach back out to me. And she's in a whole nother country. So thank you for showing me stuff. Thank you for the wisdom. Um, thank you for I'm just gonna give you your flowers while you're here. Just thank you for everything, man. I really, I really appreciate you. But um, and and, and try to save your ears for tomorrow because you know that old boy gonna be loud. But um, but anyways, like essentially what I'm saying, y'all, is like you have to get to a point to where Yo, I'm interested to buy the stomach cleanse. If you talk, if you were, if you're talking about my seven or ten day detox, do know it's a PDF protocol. But it's on. You can go to coachbrian.com. I hit the link in my bio. Love you too, girl. And um, let me answer this other question before I continue. How can I stop my feet and ankles from swelling every day? I don't know if you just got in the um in the live, but I'll say that it's pretty much the same thing I just told the other person. I would say do a flush seven ten or twenty one day flush. Focus more so on cold pressed fruit juices. And uh, soap too. Like a lot of people are running away from Epsom salt baths. Get that water as hot as you can stand it, and get in that uh, and get in that tub with some Epsom salt, probably especially the elderberry one. And soak. Start drinking teas too, like dandelion tea, milk thistle tea. Um, well, dandelion root, milk thistle. Um, uh, you can start doing burdock. You can do uh, ginger. Like giving your body a because swelling is typically forms of inflammation. So you have to move the inflammation around or release the inflammation to get the uh the relief that you're requiring or the 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 stillness of the joints or whatever's going on down there. But I go back to say that the more you run from yourself is the more that you're running from who you're supposed to be and you're running from 
the true destiny and the true probably happiness, because Jim Carrey said it the best. Like when you're suffering with finding your identity and going through mental this, that, and the third, oftentimes your your avatar, as we should, I'm gonna use that for example analogy, your avatar is playing the wrong game. You know, it's like you're you're living a life that's not meant to be yours. Because prime example, I I wouldn't say I denied it, but I was suppressing a lot of my interests for a while. I'm a, I'm a, if y'all know me, I'm a big nerd. Like I, I read books all day. I watch educational stuff all day. I'm big into anime. I'm big into manga. And like I uh I have I'm a music head. So like I've been a musician since I was a child. It runs in my family. I went to college for it, all that type of stuff. And um I have instruments all around. I make music stuff like that. And I remember I was trying to be somebody I was not. When I got to college, going to the clubs, and uh, cause I don't drink or smoke, but I did try it in, in, in college, and it just wasn't for me, you know. And I found myself going through. Uh, not knowing who I was, feeling lost, not feeling like I was surrounded by the right people, but I was living this life that I knew wasn't for me, you know, and I, and I was living this life that wasn't my destiny or my purpose. But once I let those things go and truly walked into who I was and started analyzing who I was, okay, what do I really like? And even in the and that's another thing too, the good and the bad, because oftentimes you're probably sad because you think. That the the negative, this, that, and the third about you is like, oh, that's not me, and I'm trying to blah, 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 blah. You got to accept your demons, too. Not to say that, like, you, you need to become them, but it's like you have human nature. You have a nature to do certain things sometimes. So acknowledge it and work on that. Don't don't just renounce it and then, like, act like it is not there because when that problem or those issues or those habits pop back up months later, uh, years later, weeks later, you didn't take the time to build a process to fix it or to deal with it. And it's like, oh, that's not me. But then you, but you're still acting out on those things because you haven't, you know, you've been denying yourself. So love the good in you, but fix the bad in you as well. Um, I love turmeric for inflammation too. Turmeric, turmeric and burdock is really good. I just started walking barefoot. I just saw, um, not too long ago, they were doing a study on, uh, there was a civilization, I forgot where, but those people don't wear shoes or nothing like that. And their toes are like, I'm talking about like crazy wide and strong. You know, like they can walk, for a crazy long distance, climb trees, all that type of stuff. And like their feet look like hands. But if you look at certain, you know, like I said, we come from monkeys and stuff like that. But if you look at certain conditions, your body's going to always evolve to where you're at. You know what I'm saying? So y'all should go check that out. Um, they're a part of you. Don't deny it. Big facts. We're perfectly imperfect. Big facts. Embrace the imperfections. Big facts. You have to. You have to. Because the moment, the moment you stop working on yourself and you start thinking, because the last thing you want to do is think you're perfect. Because oftentimes we start doing what's called shadow work or, or uh, constructive criticism internally. And then we conquer the, the big things, the conscious things, but then the subconscious things come later. And we got we got into this point. Thank y'all for the... I see how everybody's starting to follow me. Thank y'all so much. Nothing but love. But um, everybody starts to go through these phases and it's like you thought you've triumphed over the apparent things. And you get this God complex or this perfection complex or this complex of, oh, I don't really need to work on myself. And then the rest of you hit you in the mouth with a closed fist. And you just sitting there like, oh, my God. It's like, what is what, like, what is this me? What, like, who, I'm, I'm driving people away. I'm and that's another thing, too. When you start working on yourself and you start make, making actual progress, don't try to hold on to the stuff that's letting go of you or that you're letting go of. You're going to lose interest in certain things whenever you start to better and change yourself for your destiny. You're going to, I've been, I didn't been through it. You're going to lose relationships. You're going to lose family members. You're going to lose friends. You're going to lose certain opportunities and stuff like that because now the a, a new table is prepared for you. A new destiny awaits you. A better destiny awaits you. But it takes you working on yourself and it takes you accepting yourself for who you are and doing that work and moving forward to actually walk into those things. A few episodes ago, we talked about um, getting things and not feeling as though we deserve it. And I feel like that comes from us not fully acknowledging who we are as ourselves, but it also comes from you, you know you haven't done the work. You know you, you know sometimes we get things, now granted, favor isn't fair. Oftentimes, you see people getting stuff that they don't deserve. I'm I'm a benefit. It's like, I have, like you know how to say, uh, what does it say? Is? Uh, talent, no, hard work beats talent because talent hardly works. I'm musically gifted. I didn't actually start practicing and like, I could have been light. I, well, now I'm where I need to be as a professional musician, but like I could have been light years ahead of where I'm at now if I would have taken the first, what, 10 years of my life musically, like seriously on my mom's side, it's all music composition, dance. On my dad's side, everybody could sing. Everybody could sing. Everybody could make music or they could rap or something like that. 
And I was the in-between child. Like I can do, I can do it both, but I specialize in instruments. And, you know, I would like, I would do my thing, you know, I'll be blah blah blah. I got my music scholarship, got this, that, and third, got accepted into the uh, one of the best jazz studies uh in Louisiana and blah 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 blah. And then when my like my freshman year had really hit me, and I was and I'm looking at my classmates theoretically in musical composition fly ahead of me, play better than me, get the higher jazz spots, get the higher uh big band spots and blah 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 blah. I'm sitting there like, what have I been doing for the past? You know what I'm saying? And then I really then I started working harder. But my natural talent just got me to that point. And then I'm left-handed. So it's like I already have to learn and play backwards from y'all. You know, so I had to reteach myself how to play piano. I had to reteach myself how to play guitar. I had to reteach myself how to play upright. I had to reteach myself on how I write music and stuff like that just to keep my get my grades back up and not lose my scholarship. You know, but if I wouldn't, dang, y'all, this hit a, the stream keeps freezing. I'm sorry, y'all. Like I'm on Wi-Fi and everything. So I don't, it might just be, I don't know what's going on. My apologies. But um, but y'all just keep coming back in. Just load, just come out, either close the app or close the live, refresh it and come back. I'm I'm gonna still be here because I still got some more stuff to talk about. But when I started working on myself, when I started working on my shortcomings, when I started working on my dexterity and things of that nature, it's like I started moving forward. I started getting the gigs that I want. I started getting the band placements that I wanted. I started getting the, the musical jobs that I wanted. Then certain crews and certain musicians started acknowledging me and being around me. But if I wouldn't have put that work in on myself, then we just would have been, <laughs> look, I wouldn't have been where I'm at now. You know, because like, I'm going to just keep it a buck with y'all. It, it is what it is. Either you're going to do this work and either you're really going to do what you have to do and you're going to move forward in life. Because that's the thing. Time, the sun don't wait for nobody. Even if you in you six feet in the ground, the sun's still gonna shine and it's still gonna rise. It's gonna go down, the moon gonna come up, and then the sun gonna come right back up the next day. So I don't we don't have time to waste. We don't have time. You want this particular type of person to be in your life or these skills and this, that, and the third, guess what? You gotta work on that. You gotta actually do that stuff. You gotta actually line up with that because the moment you take it for granted, the moment you stop doing, like one of the biggest things that I'm finally like kind of getting some mental grip on is like I wish I would have had the plethora of knowledge and resources and what I do before my grandmother passed. I wish I would have been more diligent and not even really that. And I think that's just me attacking myself mentally because I was going to be where I need to be in this timely fashion anyway. So it is what it is. If y'all, all y'all that don't know my, my, that don't know my grandmother passed recently, like right before my TikTok boom, like my grandmother passed recently. And I was blaming myself a little bit because it's like, I wanted her to see me reaching people and healing people. I wanted her to to like benefit from this as well. Like I want to do healing communities. I want to do like uh herbal uh restoration communities. I want to do all that type of stuff for the land for the people and all of that. Like I'm I'm still trying to get like my uh finish my wholesale process for Star West Botanicals so I can do my herbal proprietary blends and do all of that stuff across my city. Like I, I want to do it like y'all. I really like look the money gonna come with it. I'm not worried about the bag. I'm not I, like God gonna bless me. God, God know my heart. But I wanted her to see that. So when she passed, it took me, it took me some time, y'all. Like I couldn't, like, it took me some time. But I'm at a place now to where it's like I've come to the and thank y'all for I see somebody say my condolences, rest in power. Thank y'all so much. That was I appreciate y'all. And I'm in a place now to where it's like she may not be here this in this realm to see it, but I'm gonna do what I gotta do regardless. I'm gonna make her proud some way, shape, or form. And don't get me wrong, I love you know, I got mad love for my mom, my other grandparents, my dad, everybody. I'm still trying to make them proud, but ain't nothing going, ain't nothing beating that. I'm sorry. Like something, something, I don't know, something just broke. Something left me when she died. You know, it was like, it's, it don't, you know, it's just the, the Sundays don't feel the same. The family doesn't act and feel the same. You know, it's like the the spirit, like the matriarch of the family is gone. So like the mantles is being passed over, but it's being juggled around right now because it's still a balance and a restructure going on right now. It's a spiritual restructure going on right now. It's a different spiritual impartations going on right now. So until that's reestablished, there's a void. But at the same time, you don't really ever really feel that void because nobody can replace that person, that particular person in their status in, in your life. You know, so... Everything I do and who I do it for, let me let me tell y'all something. It's like, it is it's for me. It's for the betterment. It's for the glory of God. But at the same time, it's for it's for my grandmother. Like I want her to look down and be like, "That's my boy. That's my J." You know, that's what she used to call me. So it's like, it is. You know, what I'm saying like, it, life happens. It is what it is. But like, we have to stay the course. You have to stay the course. I don't know who this for because I wasn't even planning on talking about this. But you have to stay the course. It be the moments where you're supposed to be. Just like just for this season and it's like what's one season in your life 
where you just got to like, okay, I'm going to walk the straight and narrow. I'm going to stay focused. I'm going to put my nose down. I'm going to study. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to get this. I'm going to really lock in. I'm going to start this business. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, like what is one season? What is from August to December? What is that true discipline? But oftentimes we fall short or we deviate because, oh, it's, it's too much or we wasn't ready for blah, 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 blah. No, go through your tests. Go through your season. Go through your trials because once you're going to get towards the end of that, watch what's going to come out of it. Like, a lot of people didn't see for the past seven years. Y'all can't see it because the camera angle, but the plethora of books that I had to read, the clinical trials, the, the, the herbal trials, learning what this herb is, how this grows, how this deals with people, how this person healed this person with that. What's this case study over here? How does it go? How you mix these herbs together without creating a poison? That's another thing, too. Like, I, I'm not just on here saying willy-nilly stuff. It's like I have to watch how I tell people to mix stuff and talk about because, like, certain herbs you mix together will literally create a poison. That's why when people be in my comment, even though I don't like being in my comment section and correcting people, it's like, because I feel like it's so many of y'all sometimes just, just spewing out ignorance. But it's like, I watch because it's like certain people be like, and they'll run with that. They'll just be like, oh yeah, well, such and such said, blah. I was like, no, don't mix that. What are you doing? Like, if you mix this with this, that's going to cause this. And then now your blood's going to like, no, no, baby. No, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I take it upon myself to really like, Watch how, like, even though, like, we got to do a little audio and video trends for traction and, you know, stuff for TikTok or whatever, I still try to keep it in my niche and as strict to the book as possible because even even in the midst of learning things in a funny, if I, y'all not do my skits and stuff like that, if people learn it through jokes or people learn it through a song or people learn it through me being silly or whatever, I'm still going to give you facts. I'm still going to give you book. Like, I, like, some skits... I literally write down the actual definition. I will memorize it if I don't have it like memorized word for word. Cause like we can have a general conception of stuff, but like to, but I actually, I like saying stuff, especially when I'm posting it. I like to be grammatically and like informatively correct and accurate. So like y'all don't see me doing that skit over 16, 20 times until I say it right. Because I want this person to know that macaroon does this, that ginseng does this, that burdock does this, that, that pumpkin seed all does this. And if you do it this type of way, this is the result of it. Because the, like you start leaving room for error and questions, and then people start. You know, and granted, I'm not saying that's my responsibility because you can't get everybody, you can't correct everybody. But I'm gonna do my due diligence. That's just me. That's just me. You know. But let's move on to something else because y'all y'all got me in my feelings. <laughs> I'm not I'm not even supposed to be talking about this. Though. Y'all got me in my doggone feelings. But um, and once again, if y'all follow new people I'm seeing up in here, y'all please hit that follow button, hit that like button, um, tap the screen, you know, get the fill of meet up. And then, like, just put me in the algorithm. We Gucci, we good. What's your take on kale and spinach and its benefits? I, I'm down for leafy greens in general. What people don't realize, and they've been, leafy greens been getting such a bad rep. I get it. It's a different glycemic effect. Uh, effect. It, it it hits the insulin. It, well, it requires insulin, and it doesn't go directly to the blood like most people think it does. But I will say this. Leafy greens are essential for heavy metal detoxification processes. Oftentimes, people can't conceive, people have mental disorders, people have blood, people have whatever disorder you have. You typically have micrometals floating through your body that need to come out. Or you have some form of hardened mucoid plaque or parasitic infection or something, whether it be micro or macro. Like, you have it inside of your body, and it's trying to come out. And if you're not eating the proper things or constantly on a diet or on a habit... So where like you can flush those things out and give your body a fighting chance and you're not surrounding yourself with actual vegetation, you know, it's like you're just you're doing yourself a disservice. Like I oftentimes tell people, like if you can't do um, green juice every day, do some chlorophyll. If you can't do chlorophyll, do some green juice. You got to do one or something. You got to give yourself a fighting chance. But I'm, I'm real big on leafy greens in general. What do you think about hybridized fruits? Man, well, you said something before that. I'm... I'm new, man. I respect your purpose, brother. Much love. I appreciate you. For, like, for real, for real. I'm not just saying I appreciate you. Anybody that's going to sit here and acknowledge me in general, y'all don't have to do that. But, like, the fact that y'all be acknowledging me and giving me my flowers, like, peace unto y'all and blessings unto y'all. Favor ain't feel. I love y'all for real. What do you think about hybridized fruits? Me, personally, um, I don't... I'm from the South. I'm from Louisiana. And all I know is seeded. All I know is from the ground. All I know is... As close to the first generation as possible. And on top of my holistic knowledge that I've been studying as far as like, you know, the original fruits, how they used to look and stuff like that. Somebody's still trying to go live with me again. I'm sorry. I don't want to, I don't want to go live with nobody right now. Turn off, yeah, turn off the invites. I don't want no invites right now. Give me a second, y'all. I don't, I don't want that. Let me decline. Respectfully, I'm declining. But, um, but like I'm from the South, you know, it's like I go, I want fruits. I don't have to go to Walmart. I can go to Fresh Pickens. I can go to the, the farmer's market on uh, every third, every second, uh, no, it's every third. 
every I, I typically go to Fresh Pickens. That's why I'm gonna remember the farmers market stuff out here. But like Thursdays and Saturdays, I think it's like every third or second uh Thursday and Saturday. So that's all I know. You know, so it's like when I start seeing this hybridize this and hybridize, my my accent, Lord, uh hybridize this and this, that, and the third, and blah, 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 blah. I'd be like, ah, I'm good. And then a lot of like I said before, like I said, I literally said this yesterday. I was like a lot of fruits that they're taking the seeds from. The seeds are typically the most beneficial parts of the fruit. If y'all know me, I'm a grape head. I love grapes. And I eat the seeds because the seeds have, they yield so many nutrients to the body. But now we got, it's so hard to find seeded grapes. Even like in the fresh markets I go to now, when you when you see the, the spot where they would come, I forgot the dude name, but where he come put his grapes at, it's like, it's empty. Like you got to get there early because it's gone. You know, so that, I'm just not a fan of that stuff. I'm sure there are really good benefits, but not everything works for everyone. We have to make sure. And I, hey, now, now you, now you, now you talking my language. Now you talking my language because one of my biggest things is not being biased. I was one of those people who were living a fruitarian lifestyle, all that type of stuff. But now I'm more, I'm 80, 20, 80 percent fruits and vegetables, 20 percent meat, and that's just me being honest because I've seen on both sides people heal meat, heavy meat eaters. Uh, heal and heavy plant people heal and then i've seen a lot of vegan people and all of that be sick a lot of plant a lot of uh, meat eaters be sick and you got people that that don't have access to said resources you got people who in prime example japan japan has some of the the longest lifespans i'm talking about like 100 plus years like 120 130 plus years and like they're not fruitarians but it's their method of practice, the things that they put within their body, and the things that they that they put inside of them, and they do for themselves to create vitality. I'm real big on a high fruit volume diet, cycling on and off of herbs when need be, high fruit juice diet, and definitely getting you a lot of exercise and sunlight, and definitely getting inside of a sauna box. Like if you and and if you do that and you stay true to that and you meditate and you stay strictly to like your your spiritual side and all that and take care of yourself, like you know what I'm saying? It's like our ancestors did it. Even whenever they came from the, when they took them from the slave ships and all that type of stuff, our ancestors did it. And, they're, and and granted, the quality of food is not the same of what it was before. But let's be real. If you're not growing and are killing your own food and stuff like that to consume it, you, you've already cut down a lot of the control and say so you have over your life. So start planting your own stuff. How about that? Start hunting your own stuff. How, how about that? You know what I'm saying? And like, and just, I don't, I just, I'm not one for picking sides because I've also had clients, plenty of clients to where like, they're not plant-based and some they're, they're not, uh, they don't eat meat. And I healed them both the same with the same practice. You know, I had a lady that was precancerous, done with that. Had a lady that suffered with postpartum, sciatic pain and stuff like that, healed her from that. I had another lady, she had uh, HSV and all that type of stuff, healed her from that. Like, and she was eating it. And I granted I had to stop her from eating eggs because eggs feed viruses the most. But like, she was eating a certain type of way. I ain't gonna put up inside that. She was eating a certain type of way. She good now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, do what works. I promote. I promote what's going to heal and what's going to work. Now I'm not saying go eat ribs every day and fried chicken and stuff like that. But if you're going to eat meat, like eat like cook it yourself. Season it as little as possible. You know what I'm saying? Like really grill, grill it, smother whatever. Take away all off because it's really the fats that be getting to us and be tearing our livers and stomach up. And our body can't process that, but that's what y'all, a lot of y'all can't handle that conversation. But it's really the fats. Even on the plant side, the fats are tearing us apart. The oils are tearing us apart. You know, but like I said before, I got my way of doing stuff. That's how I'm going to do it. It is what it is. Y'all go about your business. I believe plant-based means 75 plants, 25% meat. However, however you want to think about it. I'm 80-20. It's, it's up to y'all. It's whatever you want to do. Just be healthy. Be healthy, bro. You got people that, like I said before, you got people that don't even know what vegan is. All they have allotted to them are cows and goats and they eat cheese, heavy cheese diets and all that type of stuff. Healthy people. Everybody's different. Everybody's geographical adaptations are different. Let's just be honest. If you're in America, you're probably eating a standard American diet and we have some of the worst quality of food if you're not growing yourself in the world. So yes, we're going to be sick. We're going to lead in obesity. We're going to lead in high blood pressure. We're going to lead into adrenal, adrenal gland dysfunction. We're going to lead in sex. That's another thing too. The reason why, and I'm gonna get to the, I'm gonna get to what y'all saying too. Well, let me say it right now because I'm gonna remember it. Um, acne is also a key indication of what's going on inside of us. Prime example: uh, constipation. If you have a lot of uh, acne, you probably have the worst bowel wounds, or you probably have packed up lymphatic and uh, digestive gunk inside your body that can't come out so the skin is, is porous and it's our third kidney so it's going to try to poo on itself because it can't poo out the other way and it, it may sound gross and but i mean that's that's the reality of it if it can't get out the body's going to find a way to alleviate itself the body's going to find a way to heal, heal itself that's why like prime example i'll talk about like blood pressure and stuff like that 
that that happens because your people that have like high blood pressure and stuff like that, people typically have poor quality blood. So the body tries to compensate by overproducing blood and grabbing the good the little bit of good that's in there, but it has to overproduce to get a little bit more of the good. And it spreads the, even though it's spreading the bad, the body's like, I'm gonna do what I gotta do to get what I need, at least for the day. You know what I'm saying? So you just gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. Made LLC, I asked that too. What do you think? I don't know. You might be, I see you added somebody else. My bad, I thought that was my question. But, um, but yeah, like, like I was saying, and also to y'all, I'm not skipping y'all questions. It's just my phone's way over there. So like y'all feel free to put the questions again so I can get to like get your statements so we could talk about it. I'm not avoiding nobody, nothing like that. But that's just my phone's like 12 feet away from me. And my arms are long. They're really long, but they ain't that long. <laughs> What's going on, Miss Unique? I ain't seen you in a minute. What's happening, Miss Unique? Welcome back to the building. I ain't seen you in so long. Well, I ain't heard from you. I know you're still around. I ain't heard from you in a minute. But like I hope all is well. Hope you're blessed and hope you're full of favor. But yeah, bro, like. That's just that's just where I'm at with the world right now. It's like I'm not gonna be those that person that's just gonna pick a side. I will I, cause I used to be like that's why I have a lot. If you go back and look, if y'all go to my YouTube and y'all go back and look at a lot of videos that I have up on there and stuff like that, like from my from years ago, y'all can see my ideology was parallel, but it wasn't the same. I showed the transparency. I showed the like when I was talking stupid or what I thought I knew was right coming up even the, throughout the past seven years. I'm not taking that down. Like, I want y'all to see the growth. I want y'all to see what's happening. That's just me. I'm a, I'm, ooh, I almost said something I couldn't say. I'm a real blank word. I can't say that, but I'm a real person. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm not going to, I don't have nothing to hide, bro. Like, it, it is what it is. People need to know that there's a, there's a trajectory and there's a course. How you get there is on you, but you got to move forward. I asked, have you ever looked into diets based on blood type? I did. The Eat Right for Your Blood Type, I have both copies of that, both editions of that book, and I actually tried it. And I, I'm AB positive. It did not work for me. Adjunct made me so sick. And like when I did further research on it, like the 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 anatomical physiology behind what they're saying and and like how the carbon constituents come together and the the alien not alienation the augmentation of the blood and blah blah blah. That part is that part is very accurate, very accurate. But the foods. That they're saying is like, look, cause you know they have like very beneficial, neutral, and I forgot what the other part was like, avoid and stuff like that. Like when I literally ate the opposite of what they were telling me to eat, like cause they were telling me um oranges and stuff like that was bad for me. But I love like citrus fruits. Like it gives me energy, it makes my stomach feel good. Like all that. Like I'm cause I used to suffer. If y'all know me, my holistic journey started in 2013. Cause I had the the worst stomach. I had IBS. I had like it was bad, y'all. I had the worst stomach problems. But um the more I started eating like the things that my body naturally liked and stuff like that. I healed myself, started studying these type of herbs, started doing it, started going for like my, you know, I started doing all my stuff that I got to do to get myself to where I need to be. And that book was just a, it's not a complete, I don't want to say, cause I don't want to bash nobody work. That That's that man work. Like, cause a lot of stuff in there is accurate and it may work for some other people. I feel like it's a more, um, some more eukaryotic way of, of eating, but I'm a prokaryotic creature, you know? So it's like, that's, that just don't work for me. Now, like I said, the the history behind it and the anatomical physiology that they break down and all the stomach acid of the stuff they break down and all that and like all the uh, the lymphatic adaptation and stuff like that, I feel as though that part is accurate. But the diet part, I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. It's bentonite, clay, psyllium husk, activated charcoal, lemon juice, and chia seed. It's a good flush. I wouldn't put that all together. I, I definitely wouldn't put bentonite clay inside of my inside of my body. And our, like. And I, I get why, because the psyllium husk that uh, that uh, it swells up, and then the bentonite clay, it, it works as though like somewhat of a, a micro metal magnet, and then you have the uh, activated charcoal that's also another uh, aggravated uh, magnet, but it leaves behind trace minerals that are toxic. Like the lemon juice and the chia seeds, that's good. I would rather you do warm water with lemon seeds, lemon seeds, Lord, with uh, lemon juice and chia seeds, but all the other stuff, nah, you good. You do better just doing um, L-glutamine, uh, liquid oxygen, chlorophyll, cats, no, no, rewind, rewind, uh, L-glutamine, uh, liquid oxygen and chlorophyll, like in an eight ounce shot glass and just take one to the head every morning. I feel like that'll do wonders for your gut or, um, take all the gluten out, take all the cheese out, go on a high fruit juice, like flush and or do my, I'll do my seven to 10. I got like a seven to 10 day detox in my, uh, go to coachbrian.com. I'll click the link in my bio. It's a PDF protocol program. It's reusable. Like do that. Like I got, bro. Y'all, y'all go on my Instagram. Y'all go wherever. Y'all, there's testimonies of it everywhere, especially on my Instagram. So y'all, y'all do what y'all want. But that right there, I feel like that's that's the that's the bee's knees. Um, the hormones. Ah, dang, I missed the comment. I, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just scroll down. I'm sorry, y'all. I, just, I didn't. I don't want to miss that. Y'all got some good stuff. I might have to just move closer. 
the hormones from birth control affect our body so bad. Oh, don't get me started on that. Don't get me started. Let me, let me tell y'all something. The reason why, and I know I'm about to get a lot, I know I'm about to get a lot of flack for this. I don't care. The reason why PCO, PCOS and all these endocrine disorders and all that type of stuff going on right now, and we, we're so high in volume. Granted, the, the standard American diet is crap. But the androgen displacement that birth control causes is trash. And it throttles your body. Like, it throws it throws everything off. Like, oh, the, the very... Man, I don't want to offend nobody when I say this, but this is just the holistic side of me. The very concept of taking a synthetic chemical or synthetic hormones inside of your naturally occurring cycling hormone body to infertilize yourself or inhibit any type of conception blows my mind as far as why you should be on that and on that like regularly or routinely. It makes no sense. Dive, uh, you know what? Before y'all even try to do the whole debunk thing and blah, 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 and it helps with my peers and blah, 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 go do research on androgen. Go do research on how androgen uh, and the displacement of androgen Messes with the endometrium lining, how it causes cysts, how it causes welded cysts on the uh, fallopian tubes, how it causes um, bad PCOS, it causes blood clotting, it causes excessive cyst creation, which causes excessive bleeding, which causes excessive ab abdominal pain. Go look that up. Go look at androgen displacement and androgen imbalance and how it ties to the endometrium lining and watch. That should be enough for y'all to stop doing birth control in general. You know, like if you're, you got to think about it. It's like if you're having hormonal problems or like vaginal problems, putting, I just don't see a need for synthetic hormones. You know, it's like just with the herbs that we have, you know, like they'll give y'all that, but they're not going to tell y'all, well, how about some maca? How about getting on some evening primrose? How about getting on some cohosh? How about getting on a, a high fruit volume diet? And exercising more and doing this type of flush or growing, accum growing an accumulation to the tolerance of your body and trying to figure out what works for that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's just, it's just, it's behind backwards. How do you feel about vasectomies? Now look, now look, <laughs> I'm going to just be real with y'all. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm on the fence about it, if I'm being completely honest with you, because as much as I am here for, for it, I'm not here for it because... I don't know. It's like, I don't feel like stuff like that should be, our reproductive organs should be being played with like that. Because even though we have the technology, I don't feel like it should be played with like that because it gets to a point to where what can actually heal and what's required to, so, so say, reverse those things. And when it comes down to the prostate, the urinary tract, our uh, venous corpus, all that type of stuff, like we're dealing with very sensitive glands. We're feeling, like now you're starting to mess with your reproductive and endocrinology. You know, so now you're starting to mess with these different things. And I'm here for it. Now, don't get me wrong. If you know you you don't want to have kids and this, that, and the third, or like, you know, you have this deficiency or this mutation, blah, blah, if you're just a rare person that has this mutation and your kids come out a certain type of way, you don't want that, I mean, you're an adult. Like, go do that. But at the same time, if it's to me, it's each his own. But like, I'm, I'm on my, my answer, my honest answer is that I'm on the fence about it because there was a point in time where I wanted one. I was like, I don't want no kids. But now, now that I'm in the type of relationship that I'm in and I'm looking at where my life's going, I don't mind having a little girl. I don't. You know, so it's like, it's to each his own. But I'm, when it comes down to, well, look at you. <laughs> I was just talking about your behind not too long ago. If you want to say hi, you can come say hi. Uh, this young lady right here is standing right there. She came flying to the studio. But, um, but yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm on the fence about it. It's like, I, if that's something you want to do, do it. But if that's something that you don't want to do, don't do it. You know, it's, it's not the same as a, a hysterectomy. A hysterectomy, like, they taking everything. You know what I'm saying? That's not reversible. So, uh, what's worse, vasectomy or abortion on the body or risk-wise? Um, in general, my personal beliefs, I feel as though an abortion is worse because, just for the basic principle behind it, a man can go and spread his seed all over the world, you know, and, but a, and he can do it day to day, week to week. But a woman can only conceive one child at a time or twins or whatever at a, at a time. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, as far as the effects on the body, I feel as though abortions are harder 
on the body because you actually going in there and messing with the endometrial line and stuff like that as far as a vasectomy. And then it's a repeating thing. But as far as a vasectomy, it's a one-time thing. It does kind of mess with the hormones a little bit. It does. Your body has to start reproducing and healing a certain type of way. And you are creating scar tissue. But when it comes down to abortion, it's different. It's like the way that, that, that for not fertility, that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The way uh, conception even forms and like the process and like by the time the abortion is even you can have and stuff like that, you are already messing up like even on a hormonal level, like you're messing things up and it's harder to recover from that than it is from a vasectomy. But y'all body, y'all choice. I'm one of those people who I would never tell nobody what to do with their body. I'm going to tell you what I believe in, but you know, it is what it is. I want like five kids. I need to hurry up. I'm going to get pregnant for, I'm going to be pregnant for five years. Child, that's a lot. And you look young. You look crazy young. Good. More power to you. I don't know about no five kids. One, two at the most for me. Like, and the scary part is twins, like, <laughs> twins run heavy in my family and they skip every other generation. So it's like my cousin's generation, well, my older cousin's generation, I'm in this generation. And then there's my sister. Uh, that Those three different generations inside of like my, on my mama's side. And like my cousin on the top tier, he, two of them actually had, tw- they had twins. And then it skipped that generation, then it skipped the next generation. And then now it's our turn. And every single one of those grandkids that's from my generation, they've all had their children and nobody's had twins. And they've had three plus children and nobody's had twins. And don't guess, guess, just guess who's left. Just get who hasn't, who haven't had kids yet. Get, me and my sister. Out of all the cousins in that generation, all the, just the ones in my generation, I'm the only one out of that generation that has yet to have a child. Because let me see, let me go through the list. He got he got a little girl who okay next. She got a little girl that's my godchild next. Uh, he got like four kids. The other one got like two kids next. And then there's then there's me and my mom and, uh, and my people. I don't me and my sister don't have no kids. And then the generation after well not generation but the the sibling after that that one got three four kids. Another one after that just had their second child. So it's like. That's the part that creeps me out because it's like it runs heavy in my family, you know, so on both sides of that. So, Jesus, I just love the sound of children in a full house. Hopefully the man I'm with will want the same. Don't say hopefully. Write that down. I got a vision board right here. Everything I write down comes to pass. Write that down. Believe for that. Manifest that and chase that type of person. That should be one of the first things y'all talk about once y'all get comfortable with each other. Hey, how you feel about, uh, like, you know, see y'all been talking or courting each other for like a few months or whatever. Like, hey, look, I ain't trying to have no kids no time soon or nothing like that, but I am thinking though, it's like, are you a family type of dude? Like, what was your, or better, what was your childhood like? What you liked about your childhood? Y'all had a heavy house or, you know what I'm saying? Like, really, or ask around the question and see what that person feels about children and stuff like that. If dude don't meet the requirements and that's, that's a deal breaker for you, you already know what to do. On to the next, to the left, like Beyonce say. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you got to take it day by day, step by step, and don't settle if that's what you really want. But, you know, all in all, I know there's a lot to take. I, yeah, I agree with it. <laughs> I know there's a lot to take care of, but I'm seeing myself, I'm seeing, I'm setting myself up to have that type of household. I, yeah, I feel you. If that's what you want and if that's what you're doing and that's what you can handle, by all means, by all means, do your thing. But as far as for me and mine, five or six, I don't oh, Lord. Like, when my little nieces and nephews and my godchildren be over here, it be... And that's the crazy part. Children love me. Like, children always come to me. But I just... I don't know about no big old family. Like, I come from a, a, a family of three. It's me, my brother, and my sister. And it's like... that. Me and my sister in the house alone was enough. You know? Like, that was... The, I don't know. And, like, we already a close-knit family. So, just to imagine five of me... And, you see, y'all don't know me as a child. And y'all don't know her as a child. Like... Five of me, forget her, five of me in the house, whether it be boy or girl, ch- child, I don't know if I have the patience. I'm going to just be real with y'all. I'm not abused. I don't be putting my hands on children. I feel like we could talk to children. We could set them straight. Is is on the, ra- I'm talking about the extreme rarity that we have to put our hands on the child. It should be something very, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't, it shouldn't be beating no child. But, uh, but some children do reap crying, but ain't none of my business. But I will, I will say that like five of me running around, that's a problem. That is a what y'all. I was climbing tree. Prime example. Let me tell y'all how bad I was. Well, how I ain't even say bad. How adventurous I was. I had a habit. I always did love being outside. But my grandmother had uh pecan trees, plum trees. Um, what's the other name of that tree? Uh, uh some kind of like Asian tree she had in there. That grew. It's some kind of plant she had. And then she had this oak tree that was. I'm talking about taller than her house. It was huge. And guess where I was? I was always climbing a tree. I was all always outside barefoot. 
I was always just doing something crazy. And like my habit I had was after school, I would always go to my grandmother's house because she lived right down the street from our house. Um, they would do bus would drive up to my grandmother's house. I go put my book sack down. Hey, my mom, blah, 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 hugs, kisses, all this stuff. Hey, I'm going outside. And she got like two, three, four acres of land. So she got a small house on a lot of land. I'm from the South. We got like we country, country. So like uh, they always know well, what he at. Oh, he in the back. He always in the backyard doing something. Either I'd be like on the, she had like a little picnic, picnic bench area I'd be out chilling at. But I grew the habit once I got older and strong enough to start climbing trees. My habit, I kid you not, this tree was about three, three or four stories tall. My habit was to climb to the top of the tree. There's this little branch that came out. Like, oh, thank you for the love. I see the gifts coming through. Thank you for the love, my dude. Um, there was this um tree branch that came out real, real, real long. It was real, it was real uh strong. Like it's a real, real strong branch. And I would just sit up there and just look at like it was so high, I could have seen the cul-de-sac. And I could have seen like the like not the whole city, but a good bit of the block. And I just sit there and just watch. I just watch everything. I watch people going in and out of their houses. I watch the animals playing. They had like this farmer open field that they was doing construction. I watched them build stuff. I watched one of my greatest friends I grew up with. He'd be practicing his drums in the backyard. I watch him. I watch man, that's a lot of gifts coming through. Thank you so much, bro. Peace and love to you. Thank you so much. Um, I watch, I watch like everything happening. So lo and behold, I was like, man, the cops are kind of they acting. Thank you for the rules, my love. I, I was like, man, the cops are, uh, oh, oh, that's what I meant to say. If y'all, if the people that's gifting and all that type of stuff, y'all should, y'all see like the top three people, y'all go follow them because they're showing love, love. Y'all go follow them and y'all go show them some love. But, um, I know it's like, man, that's a lot of cops. I was like, why the cops come, come to my grandmother's house like that? And I see my grandmother in the front. Like, I can't, I'm so high, I can't really hear what she's saying, but I can. They're like, what well, we did. And I'm like, they're describing somebody. I'm like, oh, Lord, they're describing me. So the cops looking all over, they calling my mama. My mama didn't get off to like five. I see that expedition flying. I think because like there was like this big um this road it's like behind my grandmother's yard that curved around to a stop sign that comes back to her house to get inside the cul-de-sac. All I saw was, and I know my mama expedition when I see it. I'm so you can hear that thing coming from down the street. She come flying, she come through the yard, she looking there, everybody looking, Jay, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sitting here like, I'm about to get my behind whipped. <laughs> Cause I'm sitting at the top of the tree, like, yo, uh. I'm about to get down, but I'm kind of scared because I didn't realize I was causing a problem. I get down, where you was, and blah, 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 blah. And I didn't realize I was had passed by, and I'm just up there looking at, looking around, looking at life. Y'all, I got the, my mama not abusive, you know, but I, I got the worst, <laughs> I got the worst whipping of my life. <laughs> it was bad, bro. They, bro, they, I had, and then I, I had messed up my school uniform coming down because I was rushing, so I didn't do my normal way to slack. It's like a little, okay, let me describe how I got, how I got down the tree. I jumped, I jumped from where I was sitting, grabbed a big branch, slide in between this hole, go down into another branch, catch that with my feet, grab the other side, and then grab this. It's like you got to jump across the other parts. You should grab this branch and just let the momentum carry you down to the grass. So, like, that was my little habit of going up and down. Like, and I was always an active, you know, adventurous type of person. I was rushing, and I, that, that branch yanked me up like a, like a, I don't know. All I felt was that branch goes, like through my shirt, I was like, oh man, like I knew I was in trouble. I get down, I got this big rip. Just got the, I'm talking about the fresh white uh uniform shirt. Just got my dog on uniform shirt. But my mama saw me, what's going on? Where you was, blah, blah, blah. And I was telling him, you well, you shouldn't be, blah, 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 blah. And I'm talking about laid it on me thick. Like make the stallion they laid it on me thick. And I'm just sitting here like, like as it's happening, I'm just like, dang, like it, it's crazy. Like it's really happening right now, you know? So and that was right before I got to like. I want to say like eighth grade, seven, eighth grade, somewhere around there. Cause I was always that kid that was outside. Like, uh, but yeah, that was, you know, that was me. And you say in my Caribbean, no, I am from, I, I may have Caribbean in me. I don't know. I'm black. I, uh, I'm just from Southern Louisiana. So, you know, it's a big cesspool of everything. But, uh, well, I'm gonna say a jambalaya. Cesspool is disgusting. A jambalaya thing. She said, okay, Tarzan, don't do me. But, um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, and I feel like I'm about to just be rambling, but I'm about to, I'm about to get off of here. Y'all this last, last story that I'm gonna get off. So, funny story, bro. I had this uncle. Y'all, I hope they don't watch this video. Um, I, oh man, I hope they, I hope they don't watch this video. I had, I ain't go, I'm gonna try my best to keep his his identity, you know, to what nobody. I don't have no because my family members be coming back and watching this, so I don't want them. I don't want them like saying, "Oh, well, he talking about you," blah blah blah. But I had this family member, this particular uh family member who um, how can I put it? He 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 like recreational uh activities i'll say that but he could barbecue ball that dude could barbecue so it's like i was about 
15, 14, I want to say. So, you know, whenever the family functions would come around for like whatever Labor Day, whatever it is, or Sunday or whatever, of course I'm outside with all the dudes, you know what I'm saying? We either we either talking or they, we bought a barbecue pit. We watching, they bring the, you know, we got the fan outside. They got the, used to have the weight bench, my uncle lifting weights, or like we showing each other, you know, the pew pews. I can't say that word because they'll flag me, but the pew pews, you know what I'm saying? All that type of stuff. And he's sitting there telling me a story. And I'm and he had like the love, uh, the old smoky grills. He just telling me a story. And, I'm, and in the back of my mind, I was like, I didn't watch this dude do this a bunch of times. I'm just say, I'm just say this. He um from his recreational, his recreational habits kind of left his mentality a little tarnished. I'll say that. And I'm watching, I'm watching him just like load the ground. I'm like, bro, that's a lot of lighter fluid. So I'm like, all right, okay, I'm gonna be quiet. I don't know what I'm not really the, you know, I'm not a barbecue grill master. I'm gonna just be quiet. So he said, so yeah, Jay and blah, 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 blah. He going and going and going in. I'm like, oh my God. And then we get to the point where it's time to light the pit on fire. Everything within me, as if I had spider senses, was like, back the hell up. Back. I, I want you to go to the other side of the yard. So I'm taking steps back. He said, oh no, watch this. I know. I'm about to show you how to do a fire. Shoo. Throws the match in there. Nothing happens. Keep in mind, it is doused with lighter fluid. Nothing happens. So I'm like, he just did all that lot of fluid and he threw it and nothing happened. So he gets another match and he's like, oh no, let me something going on with my fire. So he leans over as he's tossing it in. The flame must have connected and he has very bushy eyebrows, gray eyebrows. Woo! I'm talking about like the flame comes up and he just, whoa, like, he, you know, he causing a big scene. Now I'm watching him from the back because I backed up and I can't see what's going on. He's wiping his face. He's like, oh, oh Lord. And then he turned around, y'all. That man singed off his eyebrows. <laughs> that man had no more eyebrows, bro. Like as he, like you know, it, it was so charred. So like as he was scratching, like it was falling off. Like his facial hair, he already had patchy facial hair. It was all, it was, it was just, it was bad, y'all. It was so bad. And I'm just sitting here like, yeah, I think I need to go tell my grandparents that uh. Something, you know, something is off. I ain't, I ain't gonna say what I want to say on here, but something is off, and we just need to, we need, to, we need to talk to Unc real quick because, uh, and then when he, here's the crazy part: they actually let him continue the barbecue. The barbecue was black. It was like, it was like crunchy black. Nobody ate the barbecue. They had like the rice dress, you know what I'm saying? Like the the the, the casual Southern layout, and of course the barbecue is the staple on it. Why my grandfather had to come out? And recook like the sausage, smoked sausage, and all that. Like he redid all that type of stuff. And I'm just sitting here like, that dude just wasted about two hundred dollars worth of meat. Cause I, I got a big family. It was like that dude just wasted like two three hundred dollars worth of meat. It was like, what's what's going on? And, and yes, they let him continue. And I'm sitting here like, all right, ain't none of my business. You know what I'm saying? But like that's the that's just the the powwow I come from. She said, I just want to say your glasses frame your face amazingly. I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you, thank you. So you know what? I, that hold up. I almost forgot. I need to screenshot my top, uh, my top, there we go, my top viewers. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to start doing is, you know, if I'm not following y'all, I'm going to start following my top viewers and my top gifters. If it's going to take, there you go, take the screenshot. I'm going to start following my top gifters and my top viewers, and I'm going to start actually forming better communication and friendships with y'all because, like, I noticed that a lot of my top viewers and stuff like that, is like y'all really support. Y'all really go to the website. What I didn't did. Y'all really go to the website. Y'all really go check out like products and stuff like that. Y'all actually support and y'all spread the business and y'all spread the holistic healing. So like I'm, I'm just I'm here for the love. So as much love as y'all give me, I gotta give it back to y'all. But the thing and also thank you for the compliment. I'm uh I don't know, I'd be on the fence about my glasses because like I be I be wanting to like put my because I wear contacts too. So it's like I be wanting to put my contacts in. Sometimes I don't be feeling my glass. Like, prime example, I went to a Kendrick Lamar concert last week. Them glasses was not on my face. Like, I did so much hooping, hollering, hollering, sweating, and jumping, and flying around. Like, not a lick of glasses should have been on my face because it would have got broken. I would have been blind the whole night. You know what I'm saying? Sean, what's up, Sean? Man, all my OGs coming back up here. What's up, Sean? He says, up, man? I see you teaching the hell. You know, hey, you know what I do. You know, you know that's what I do. Shout out to Big Sean, bro. Sean been, Sean been a part of the OG crew. But uh, but dang, Sean, I, I'm about to get off. So <laughs> I know you just came in here, but I'm about to get off, fam. But yeah, y'all, that's my family. That's the topic for the day. Um, anything y'all missing, like any episodes y'all want to go back and see, or if y'all want to go back and watch this one, 
uh, I put everything on YouTube, shorts and long videos. Like I always go back and put the lives on it. We got like special guests coming really, really soon. Brooke and Kenny are definitely going to be back if y'all look. Cause I saw I'm looking at my stats. That video is doing numbers right now. So like they're definitely going to come back. That's my good friends to begin with. But um, go to my YouTube, y'all. Y'all go to the site, go to coachbrian.com. Y'all spread the word. Y'all go buy something, whatever. Support black business. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to be one of those people that just plug themselves like that. But I mean, at the end of the day, support black business, support health, and if whatever you, whatever you don't need or what you feel like somebody else can need, like get it for somebody, gift it for somebody, or send it to them because like the overall mission is to not only support the business but to heal people. You know, so peace and love to y'all. I wish y'all the best. I, I shout out to man, we had such a great live today. Like we came out smoking, we came out with good topics. The questions were phenomenal. The conversation was, was phenomenal. Like. Y'all don't disappoint me at all. Y'all never disappoint me. Even when we was down to like two viewers, two like two people on average per live. Like I love y'all so much. And even for the people that be watching that don't say nothing, but y'all be up in here soaking it in, y'all, y'all not going unnoticed. Like I really appreciate y'all and I cherish y'all. But y'all have a good one. Y'all have a blessed one. Um, y'all go eat good, drink good, all that type of stuff. Y'all be good, man. Praise God.